It's time for another adventure, one where the witches speak in rhyme. Jiggies aren't a dated movie reference and instead are puzzle pieces and all your assistants exist in a backpack. Unless they're useless. Shut up, I'm trying, okay? Today, let's discover the universally hated Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. When this game was released, every fan of the classic N64 Banjo-Kazooie series ran out and bought it. And then they all cried themselves to sleep that night the betrayal the game had caused. At its core, the problem is as follows. The original games were iconic mascot platformers created by the publishers Rare in their heyday. There had been many teasers of a third game in the series, but it had never been released. Then this game appeared, selling itself as the next game in the series. But somehow, they felt the best possible direction for the series to take was into a game about vehicles. Now before we get any further, I've heard a lot of claims over the years that this isn't a Banjo-Kazooie game. No, whether it's for better or for worse, this is a Banjo-Kazooie game. Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land is still a Legend of Zelda game. Mario Kart is still a Mario game, and Braid is still a self-entitled piece of crap. It may not have been the game everyone wanted, but that's what needs to be discovered. Now, I was going into this uniquely blind. Not only have I never played Nuts and Bolts, but I've actually never played any of the Banjo-Kazooie games at all. So then, it's fairly important to say that right away, I feel insulted. It opens recapping everything that happened in the first two games, and then they show how washed up and useless their titular duo have become. The old villain returns as a metal head, only for a computer and a cape to step up and insult the entire series. This opening feels like Rare is trying so hard to point out how cool they used to be, while also tearing down their own work and anyone who liked it. On its own, the creative car concept is fun and interesting, but when it's attached so condescendingly, it just feels kind of offensive, even to someone who's never played these games before. The levels are simple maps that you'll quickly grow familiar with, and missions scattered throughout. Completing a mission with a good enough time will give you a puzzle piece called a Jiggy. Completing it with an awesome time will get you a TT trophy, and every couple of trophies you get, TT will give you an extra Jiggy in the overworld. The more you collect, the more levels open up, with the promise that eventually you will be able to take on the computer's world itself for ownership of your home world. Each mission has a different goal, ranging from races, to having to protect something from minions, to bringing an object somewhere in a predetermined amount of time. Now, obviously, one vehicle can't be perfect for all these scenarios, so you get to constantly build your own vehicles. That is what I love most about this game, the creativity. You get to try out combinations that just look and seem so stupid, but when they work, you feel like a mad genius. It isn't as if the game gave you a vehicle designed to overcome the challenge. You came up with the vehicle. You overcame the challenge. You are the smart one. At least, once you get into the game and actually have the pieces to build something interesting and unique. At the start, you'll have to use a lot of predetermined vehicles, and you really don't have the pieces to build anything. But once you start finding pieces and can build your own stuff, the game becomes so fun. You'll even run into missions that you just beat so perfectly. There was one mission where you have to race the witch, and I built a submarine that moved so fast in the water that she gave up on racing and just shot at me. Another time I was challenged to a hurdles race, and they somehow let me enter a biplane. Needless to say, I trashed everyone. A mission to get basketballs through a hoop, make a big helicopter that they can sit in and just ferry it straight up and down. Shot put, more like pick it up and fly as fast as you can out of the area since that long way down counts as distance too. I lost more hours to this game than I realized, recording for over 10 straight hours at one point. So then, why didn't I finish this game? Because some of the missions are just absolutely terrible. In particular, any mission where you need to transport something and drop it from the air into another thing was absolutely impossible. I could probably do it, but the sheer number of attempts it would take with no real control over the ship wouldn't be worth the hassle. Then, some of the races require the use of a predetermined vehicle. 
Some of these vehicles were designed by absolute morons for no concept of how they would actually handle around other carts. Worst of all were the defense missions, though. Guns in this game are useless and impossible to aim. As much fun as I was having with the game, I reached a point where I'd finished all the levels that I cared to and could be bothered to deal with. No new areas had been unlocked, though. My options at that point were to go back and deal with all the horrible levels, or to replay missions I'd already finished to try to get a better record for the trophies until I could unlock a new area. But I was only about a third of the way done with the game, and the thought of just reaching that point all over again didn't sound appealing in the least. In that way, the game's greatest strength is also its greatest weakness. You can't make controls too tight and then have them glitch and absolutely destroy everything when you build some weird creation that take away all the fun and ingenuity. But at the same time, you can't have the controls be too loose and then demand perfection and racing and dodging obstacles. The pre-built missions can help explain things or let the developers plan for your movements, but in practice, they make for the absolute worst, most broken of missions. It might sound good on paper, but only some of the missions are any fun. While you're doing those, the game will be wonderful! But once you've finished up those missions and realize the game's just getting harder without getting any fairer or giving you parts you need, there's no real incentive to keep going, when you just know there's going to be more negative missions waiting for you. So, in conclusion, was it as bad as I'd always heard? Definitely not. Was it good? Sort of? When it's good, it's great. When it's bad, it's unplayable. I'd say my Holt should check it out for themselves if the idea of building vehicles to do crazy weird things with sounds like a lot of fun. If it only sounds interesting at most though, or you wouldn't have the patience to get past the beginning, definitely give this game a pass. Personally, I'm sure I'll pick this up again at some point and start going back to all those missions, but it won't be for a while. Apparently universally hated, Banjo Kazooie. Yes, that's right. Set up. to me In eternum's requiem.